And it's time for the exciting conclusion of how long does binary search, the binary search algorithm take? We're going to assume at this point that you're familiar with the binary search algorithm, the idea that we look, uh, that we know that we have a collection of data that is in sorted order, and we look at the middle element of the list, and based on that element we make a determination about whether the element we're looking for should appear in the first half or the second half of that list. And so we made a, a chart here to try to figure out the time, and we said if there's one element in the list, then we'll need to look at one element. If there's three elements, we'll look at the one in the middle plus the one on either side, and that's two elements in total. When there's seven elements, we'll look at the one in the middle plus there will now be three elements left once we rule out that one in the middle, and when there's three elements left, we know we look at two of them, therefore the total time for seven elements is we'll look at the one in the middle plus two more. That got us three elements. And if we carry on this pattern, we discover that when and, and I've deliberately again picked numbers of for the size of my list that correspond to situations where there will always be an exact middle instead of an even number of elements. But if there's an even number of elements, the analysis will pretty be pretty similar, right? So when there's, uh, in fact, maybe maybe we should go through that just for fun. Let's just see. Let me just convince you that when there's ten elements, I'll do it in different color here. When there's ten elements, the math is pretty similar. So when there's 10 elements, and we look in the exact middle, there'll be, there is no exact middle, right? So we'll pick one of those elements near the middle, and there will be four on one side of it, and five elements on the other side, and that one element makes 10 total. And if we get unlucky, we'll now have narrowed down the situation to five elements, right? And when there's five elements, let's look at the five element case, there is an exact middle, but on one side there'll be two, actually on both sides there's two elements, so after our looking at that exact middle, we'll have narrowed down the situation to two elements, and when there's two elements, we pick one, whichever one we pick, we might have to pick the other, right? So we'll have to look at both of those. So when there's two elements, we look at two of them. When there's five elements, we look at the one in the middle, plus both of the ones on one side, potentially, in the worst case. So that's three elements. When there's ten elements, we look at the one in the middle, plus we'll now have five left in the worst case, so that will involve looking at three elements, so that would be four total. And what I, the reason I'm showing this to you is that ten, the time for uh, hand, using binary search in a list of ten elements, is actually, does seem to fall roughly between seven and fifteen. It actually turns out to match the number of elements I have to look at in the worst case when there are fifteen elements. So, therefore, I'm going to ignore numbers like 10 and stick to these nice, super odd numbers, I might call them. Numbers that are so odd that when you chop them in half and you look at just one side, you get another odd number. Um, and that analysis is going to be good enough. All right, so back to the problem of we determined that in it takes t, I have to look at t elements when my list is of size 2 to the t minus 1. And we reason that by just looking at this pattern and noticing 2 to the 5th, 32, minus 1, got us 31. 2 to the 4th is 16, minus 1 is 15. And the question is, what is the, what is the opposite of that, right? If n is 2 to the t minus 1, if there are n elements, then what is the time? And uh, we can work that out using some math. And maybe you've already done that. n is 2... I'm just going to use carrots. Oops, I'm going to use the caret to write 2 to the t because I don't have to keep moving my cursor to write it. n is 2 to the t minus 1, and I want to solve for t in terms of n. So then I can just use algebra. So let's see. That means, actually, I'm going to write it the other way. So 2 to the t minus 1 equals n. Right, that didn't change anything. 2 to the t minus 1 equals n. I want to solve for t in terms of n, the time in terms of the number of elements. So let's see, I'll add 1 to both sides of my equation. 2 to the t, we'll add 1, so that 1 goes away, and we end up with 2 to the t equals n plus 1. Now, how can I isolate the t? 
If I think back to algebra class, there's something I learned in algebra that maybe I, maybe I hated in algebra class, but it turns out it's one of the most important mathematical concepts in computer science. It comes up again and again. It's surprisingly useful and actually fairly understandable in computer science, and uh, you'll see it in, in many of my videos, I think. And that's the idea of a logarithm, right? If I take the logarithm of both sides using the logarithm base 2, so the log, I'm going to write log 2, but I mean the logarithm base 2, so the 2 should really be slightly below the word log. The log base 2 of the left side, 2 to the t, equals the log base 2 of the right side. And continuing with my math and wishing I didn't run out of room, hmm. okay, we'll just sort of mush that up here, because I, I you don't know this, but I can't scroll any lower on my screen. Um, what is the log base 2 of 2 to the t? Well, I can take the t out, and I end up with t times the log base 2 of 2. And the log base 2 of 2 is 1. And t times 1 is t. So the left side is t. And of course, that's why I took the log in the first place of the left side. So t equals, and the log base 2 of n plus 1 is the log base 2 of n plus 1. So we'll just write log fact, I'll do that like this, so that you can see that I really know how to, ah, I'm making a mess, don't worry, it's going to be okay, there we go, t is the log base 2 of n plus 1, and if you know enough about, um, actually, I think we'll just summarize that like this, we'll say, the time is logarithmic in the number of elements, or we could say, the time is proportional to the logarithm of number of elements. And as I used I was using big O notation before, we would say that the time is big O of the log of n. And in uh, notice when we make these statements, we don't care about the fact that the logarithm is base 2. In another video, we'll go through and look at why we don't care about the base of a logarithm. That if something is proportional to the logarithm base 2 of, of a number, it's also proportional to the logarithm base 7 of that same number, and therefore we're not going to get involved in that. And we're ignoring the plus 1, and we could convince you, you using the definition of big O that that plus 1 doesn't matter, but I don't think that's really the we don't want to get hung up on that here. It looks like logarithms feature prominently in the running time, right? So the time is, is logarithmic. It's proportional to the number of elements. And that might explain why binary search seems to be so much faster than sequential search. Sequential search was proportional to the number of elements. Binary search is proportional to the log. And apparently, log is fast, right? And just to get a feel for that, what was our number here? 2 million, right? So let's see. I don't know if I can do this without making a mess. Let's see. I'm going to open up my calculator program. Here it is. And we're going to find what is the log base 2 of 200,000. So 200,000. And if I know my logarithms, I know that I can just find, I can use either log button, and I can use my change of base formula. So I can say the log base 2 of 200,000 is the log base 10 of 200,000, divided by the log base 10 of 2. I'm not going to prove that here. You can see that in, in, a, in a math video about logarithms. But it turns out it's about 18. About 18. 18. What was I doing with that 18? Oh, we'll, just, we'll just write that 18 off over here. That's the log base 2 of 200,000. 200, and that kind of makes sense. It tells me if I want to find a name in a phone book of 200,000 names, I'm going to have to look at about 18 of them. Whereas if I'm trying to find a phone number and my phone book is not sorted by phone number, I'm going to have to look at potentially 200,000 of them. And I think this accounts for why binary search is so much faster than sequential search. All right. Does this round out everything we need to know? I want to state another way of looking at logarithms. Um, since we said that the time time for binary search is proportional 
well, I don't know if I want to say, it's big O of log n, in other words, logarithmic in the number of elements. And here's an insight that might tell you that that has to be true. Whenever I double the number of elements, if I have twice as many elements, so actually let's use some numbers. Suppose I have uh, 200,000 names, and it takes me 30 seconds to find a name in the phone book. And that phone book is in sorted order, or I shouldn't be using binary search. Now, if I have 400,000 names, I move to a much bigger city. I have 400,000 names in the phone book in that city. How long is it going to take me to find a name? I'll give you a hint. It's not 60 seconds. right? If it were, then the time would be proportional to the number of elements. And that would be the true, that's true for linear search, right? If I told you I was using linear search, then you could conclude that for 400,000 names it would take 60 seconds, although that's not actually a plausible figure. But for binary search, when I double the number of elements, all I have to do is look in the middle, right? Think of it as I glued two phone books together. Here I have 200,000 names, and then I move to a larger city, so it's almost like I have another 200,000 names in the phone book, and the very first thing I do is I make a decision, I look in the middle, and I make a decision about whether my name, the one I'm looking for, is on the left or the right half of the phone book, and instantly I've narrowed down the problem after looking at just one name from 400,000 to two, approximately 200,000 names left, and therefore it's not, it's going to take, you know, 30 plus a little bit. 30 seconds plus time to look at one name. 30 seconds plus the time to look at one name. Not 30 seconds plus the time to look at 200,000 more names. So that I think that accounts, that gives us a sense of why logarithmic running time is so fast. Anytime, um, a key idea behind logarithmic running times is that anytime I repeatedly cut a problem in half, and I do that in binary search, right? I can repeatedly rule out half of my collection. Um, or I, I realize that if I double the size, the time increases very slightly. We'll just say this in extremely rough, uh, being very uh, non-rigorous about it. Anytime I double the size and the time increases by just a little bit, or I re find myself repeatedly cutting a problem in half, I'm probably going to have logarithmic times in my answer. My time is going to be logarithmic. All right, in the next video, for those of you who are familiar with Java, we'll take a look at what is the programming, what does the code look like to implement a binary search. I'll see you there.